Okay, uh, we're live now. Uh, so we will start now. Probably. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, dear all, we are going to start our presentation today with uh, Dr. Walid Tantawi. Dr. Walid was one of the eminent stars in glaucoma in UK. He's a consultant of salmologist in UK and trainer in Royal College of London. And also, he was working with us in Maghrabi before he uh, migrated to uh, UK. So uh, let us enjoy the presentation of Dr. Walid Tantawi in normal tension glaucoma who needs a neuroimaging. Please, Dr. Walid, can you can start now? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Islam, and uh, thank you for uh, all the delegates uh, for attending. Uh, I hope uh, everybody's uh, keeping safe in uh, this pandemic. Uh, uh, I will, uh, the, the talk will be in English if, if that's okay. And uh, if you want to stop me at any point, I won't be seeing the chat, but uh, Dr. Islam and Dr. Amr will be seeing the chat. So if you want me to slow down or, or translate anything, uh, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Uh, just just let me know in the in the chat. So I'll be talking today uh, about uh, normal tension glaucoma. Uh, I will be focusing mainly on uh, neuroimaging in normal tension glaucoma and who needs neuroimaging. Uh, I'll give a, a bit of uh, background uh, on uh, the normal tension glaucoma in general. Uh, and I will not discuss uh, the treatment at the end. We can, we can do that uh, in the questions uh, afterwards. So uh, we are now on the east coast of uh, Miami, Florida in the United States. There is a famous triangle formed of a half a million square miles. Uh, the records uh, show that around 75 aircrafts, 2,000 ships, and tens of thousands of men, women, and kids just disappeared there. Nobody really knows uh, where they are. Are they still alive underwater or living in uh, a parallel world? Bermuda Triangle is uh, not the only mystery in our modern world. We have some unsolved mysteries in the modern uh, medicine as well. One of the most puzzling uh, among these is normal tension glaucoma, our topic today. According to uh, a study done in Baltimore Eye Institute, 50% uh, of primary open angle glaucoma who presented in the clinic presented initially uh, with a pressure of less than 21 millimeter mercury. And uh, this goes up to two thirds in some countries like Japan. Uh, although it is uh, a common form of glaucoma, little is known about it. So what do we know about the normal tension glaucoma so far? We know that it is a disease of elderly patients above 60 years old. So you have to be highly skeptical with uh, young patients when they are referred to you uh, with a diagnosis of normal tension glaucoma or before uh, diagnosing a young patient with normal tension glaucoma, you have to be highly skeptical because normal tension glaucoma is a disease of elderly patients. Uh, we also know that it is uh, a progressive optic neuropathy without high IOP. And it is uh, worth mentioning here that there is nothing magic uh, happens at 21 millimeter mercury. Uh, it is odd that a patient with IOP of 22 millimeter mercury is called a primary open angle glaucoma. And another patient with a pressure of 20 is called normal tension glaucoma. It doesn't make sense, to be honest. So the figure 21 millimeter mercury is extremely arbitrary. Uh, but there is a, a difference between a patient with IOP of 40 and another one with IOP of 20. Um, that's why uh, I see that normal tension glaucoma is a better terminology than uh, low tension glaucoma as the pressure is in the normal range and not low. Uh, we also know that uh, the pathogenesis of normal tension glaucoma remains a mystery uh, because abnormal IOP is not necessarily uh, harmful. Uh, there are eyes with uh, ocular hypertension. We, we all see these patients uh, in our daily practice, even sometimes with IOP over 30 millimeter mercury and the optic nerve uh, remains healthy for the rest of their lives. 
So what are the theories explaining the pathogenesis of normal tension glaucoma? The two mostly uh, acceptable theories are the vascular insufficiency uh, followed by immune-related uh, disease. The vascular insufficiency theory is based upon the findings of a variety of cardiovascular abnormalities that have been uh, described in uh, patients with normal tension glaucoma, such as uh, nocturnal systemic hypotension, reduced peripapillary blood flow, uh, of brain or peripheral vascular disease, uh, cranial disease, or uh, sleep apnea. Uh, it is uh, worth highlighting here that normal tension glaucoma can be associated with hypotension, and that's uh, the most common cause uh, or most common association, but it is as well uh, associated with hypertension, meaning if the patient is over-treated with uh, blood pressure lowering tablets, especially those who take the tablets at night, they can get an nocturnal dip in their blood pressure and develop optic neuropathy. Uh, the immune-related theory is based on the finding of elevated antibodies to retinal proteins. Uh, one study showed that 30% uh, of normal tension glaucoma patients were, were found to suffer from autoimmune disorders. Uh, normal tension glaucoma is diagnosed by exclusion, and that's, that's very important. Uh, and what I mean uh, uh, about that, that if we cannot find something to blame, we then say that this patient has got a normal tension glaucoma. Uh, there is uh, a long list of conditions mimicking normal tension glaucoma. And uh, it is very important to carefully probe the patient's history and carefully examine the eye to exclude other types of glaucoma. I will stress here on the most common uh, normal tension glaucoma masquerade. Uh, actually, I cannot uh, stress enough on the importance of the disc size because large discs, unfortunately, are very often diagnosed as normal tension uh, glaucoma. So uh, as we can see here in, in this image, we will uh, fix this circle. And that's an average uh, optic nerve head. Uh, and as you can see, as we said, we, we will fix the image. Sorry, we'll, uh, we'll fix the black circle. So here we've got uh, a small optic nerve head. Compare uh, this circle to uh, the original one. And we've got here a large uh, optic nerve head. And here we've got a jumbo uh, disc, uh, or what I call it, a jumbo disc. So if we uh, look at this uh, optic nerve head without measuring the size, we can easily say that uh, this optic nerve head has got uh, glaucoma. Uh, and the cup to disc ratio, we can say it's 0.8 or 0.9 here. That's why it is extremely important uh, to not ignore the, uh, the size of the optic nerve head because large optic nerve head will uh, have a uh, large cup as well. There are other disorders uh, in the optic nerve, either congenital uh, or acquired, uh, like compressive lesion uh, on the optic nerve, uh, and optic nerve drusen and pit and chloboma or ischemic optic neuropathy. Some of these may give uh, a visual field defect similar to the glaucomatous uh, visual field. Uh, this is a patient with drusen, uh, which is really hard to see on the slit lamp, but they are easier to appreciate uh, on the red free fundus photo. Also, we should not mistake the normal tension glaucoma with the high pressure glaucomas. Uh, so uh, a famous example is misreading of the IOP because of uh, tonometric error uh, in thin corneas. Uh, this is uh, the correction table used for testing IOP based on CCT, central corneal uh, thickness. Let me give you uh, one example. Uh, if you have a patient with an IOP of 18 millimeter mercury with uh, glaucomatous uh, changes in the optic nerve and in the OCT and in the visual field, but without measuring the CCT, uh, if you have 18 millimeter mercury on the Goldman applanation and he's got thin cornea, 
So let's say four, four, five here. You should add plus seven. So his real IOP is really 25 uh, millimeter mercury, uh, not 18 as you measure it with uh, applanation. Uh, also, uh, intermittent uh, angle closure uh, or steroid induced glaucoma. That's why history is extremely important. Uh, I, uh, either the patient was on steroids, either systemic or uh, topical steroids, and he stopped them uh, years ago, they will still be on them. Uh, so, taking history, steroid induced glaucoma can easily be uh, mistaken as a normal tension glaucoma. Burned out pigmentary glaucoma, that's why gonioscopy is extremely important. And undetected primary open angle glaucoma due to diurnal IOP uh, fluctuation. So these are all things that can mimic normal tension uh, glaucoma. So how do we manage an unusual appearance of the optic nerve head? So unusual appearance can be either normal or uh, abnormal. And if it is abnormal, it can be either glaucomatous or non-glaucomatous. And if it is glaucomatous, we need to know if this is high IOP glaucoma or normal tension glaucoma. So uh, this is the systemic thinking on approaching uh, unusual appearance of optic nerve head. If you are not sure if the, copy, if the copying is glaucomatous or neurological, go back to the basics uh, because the basics would never ever fail you. So a detailed history is crucial. Uh, and what I mean by history is uh, if there is any uh, other neurological symptoms, uh, you should ask about the chronicity and pattern of visual loss. So is it acute or chronic? Is it central or peripheral? Uh, and the history of uh, low blood pressure or shock or admission to ICU or road traffic accident uh, or even MI. So any history of uh, low blood pressure, uh, then you should have uh, a detailed family history. So if, if a patient is presented with a family history of glaucoma among first, uh, first degree relatives, this is highly specific of glaucomatous cupping, not uh, neurological cupping. If the patient, as we said at the beginning, uh, normal tension glaucoma is a disease of elderly patient. So we should be highly skeptical with patients under 50 because they are usually uh, specific for non-glaucomatous cupping. Back to the visual acuity, patients with non-glaucomatous cupping have central vision loss and color vision defect significantly lower level of visual acuity than patients with uh, glaucoma. Uh, pallor is extremely important. Uh, uh, so if you look at the new retinal rim here, glaucoma patients, regardless uh, of uh, the cup to disc ratio should always have yellowish uh, or orangey rim unless it's a total cup. So pallor of the new retinal rim is highly specific for non-glaucomatous cupping, but it is relatively insensitive. Uh, visual field, as we all know, uh, the neurological visual field respects the vertical meridian. However, the uh, glaucomatous uh, defects respects the horizontal meridian. So it is extremely important to uh, look at the visual field and uh, exclude uh, any neurological visual field defect. So what will you base your judgment on? Uh, documentation, observation, and investigations. Documentation is extremely important to detect if the optic nerve uh, is normal or abnormal. What should we uh, look for? So in glaucoma patients, we should uh, look for localized RNFL thinning, uh, associated with notching, could be uh, associated with notching as you can see here, or there might be uh, an absent notch in the optic nerve head. But as you can see the difference here in the color between this area and this area. So this is the area of RNFL thinning. 
well, uh, if you can see here, it's very obvious and associating with uh, uh, notching in the optic nerve head. We should also uh, look for generalized rem thinning. So you, you can see uh, if you look at this uh, visal here and look at the cup and then compare it to uh, the area here. Uh, also, uh, we should look for enlargement of beta zone and for uh, disc hemorrhage. Uh, so note the enlargement of uh, the beta zone here uh, and the superior disc hemorrhage uh, after five years. Uh, so there's no doubt that this eye is uh, progressing. Investigations, uh, we should we should look for, uh, we should investigate if we should be with OCT. Uh, Dr. Islam, can you meet, mute everybody? Uh, we should, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, we, uh, we should uh, investigate with OCT visual field and neuroimaging, which is uh, our topic today. So uh, OCT is extremely important nowadays, uh, and it's a cornerstone in diagnosing coma patients. So if uh, the patient has got uh, no uh, OCT defect or not showing RNFL defect on OCT, you should be highly skeptical uh, that uh, this is a glaucoma patient. Uh, this is a series of OCTs for the same patient over three years. In the glaucoma progression analysis, RNFL damage was evident before any detectable visual field loss. As you can see here, uh, there is an infrotemporal localized RNFL defect, which was observed in the deviation map uh, in the presence of normal visual field in uh, October 2009. The visual field defect wasn't noted until about a year later. Uh, the field in normal tension glaucoma has got uh, special characteristics. Uh, the appearance are more advanced than the optic nerve head uh, status. So you can have uh, a, a cut disc ratio uh, of 0.4 or 0.5, where you've got uh, a severe visual field defect. It is deeper and steeper uh, and closer to fixation than primary uh, open angle glaucoma in almost 50% uh, of normal tension glaucoma. Uh, unfortunately, these patients are picked up late uh, when the disease is advanced because they are asymptomatic and usually missed in routine exams, either with the optomes or even with the ophthalmologist. Because uh, the, when, when they screen the, the, the patient uh, for glaucoma, the intraocular pressure uh, will be normal so they can easily uh, be missed. Right, so uh, neuroimaging, uh, MRI and uh, CT scan uh, are expensive procedures and they may not uh, be needed for each patient diagnosed with normal tension glaucoma. There is actually uh, a big controversy in the literature surrounding the need for neuroimaging in patients with typical normal tension glaucoma. So we're talking here about the typical normal tension glaucoma. Uh, on the one hand, many studies showed that routine neuroimaging has no diagnostic value whatsoever in typical cases uh, and should be requested only in cases that are atypical and vision. Uh, this is one study that was done on only 20 patients of uh, typical normal tension glaucoma, and none of them showed uh, any spa space occupying lesion. Uh, another study was done on 52 typical normal tension glaucoma. Again, none of them showed any evidence of uh, a mass. Um, and another study showed that the incidence of intracranial disease was not greater than uh, that is expected for the general population. So they noted that there was a, a mass or ischemic changes uh, in, uh, in the brain but it is more or less similar to uh, the general population. On the other hand, much fewer studies recommended neuroimaging for all typical no uh, normal tension glaucoma patients and found it cost-effective. 
this study uh, that found 3.8% uh, uh, of uh, the patients referred for evaluation of normal tension glaucoma. So it is important here, these are not typical uh, normal tension glaucoma. So they were referred for evaluation. Uh, they found uh, in 3.8% compressive lesions. And uh, another study uh, done by Ike Ahmed in Canada uh, found that 6.5% of normal tension glaucoma patients had clinically relevant intracranial compressive lesions uh, involving the anterior visual uh, pathway. And this is uh, my last slide and the most important one that I will end with. While the debate continues over whether to perform neuroimaging in typical normal tension glaucoma, both teams agree that there are warning signs that should prompt ordering MRI or CT. So if you got uh, one of these signs, you should straight away order uh, neuroimaging. If the patient is young, meaning less than 50, if there is central vision uh, loss or rapid deterioration uh, in the vision, if there is color vision defect, if the new retinal rim is pale, if there is neurological uh, field that respects the vertical meridian, and finally, if there is any other cranial uh, neuropathies. Uh, please do not ignore these signs as ignoring them will leave you under tremendous amount of liability or worse, it can cost you a patient's life. Thank you very much. I'm ready for questions now. We'll just keep this slide because it is uh, the most important in the in the talk. Thank you, Dr. Islam. Thank you, Dr. Walid, for this nice, uh, easy and short picture, a short lecture, but uh, really it is a fantastic one. Thank you. It hit uh, directly to the target. Uh, so we can uh, receive the question now. We have Dr. Ahmed here. Yeah. Dr. Ahmed. Uh, thank you. Thank you, dear sir. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one, uh, what uh, are the treatment of choice? There is a neuroprotective drug, for example, uh, betaxolol or alpha agonist, uh, or you start by uh, a classic uh, drugs, for example, uh, Zalatan or something like that. Second, uh, there is, uh, uh, as you know, uh, you showed that the color uh, vision test, uh, Ishihara, is it uh, can uh, I detect the neurological uh, color defect or not? Sorry, so your first question is about the treatment and uh, if we start, like which drugs we start with, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and the second question is about? Color, color, color. vision. Yeah, what about the yes. color vision? Yes, uh, you, you put uh, on the slide uh, Ishihara color plate. Mm -hmm. uh, Ish, Ishihara, as you know, uh, used for the blue yellow, but the, the neurological uh, young disease are usually uh, a red uh, defect. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, is so it Ishihara? Is it Ishihara used for the neurological color defect? So uh, I mean, everybody. Uh, let, let me let me start first with the with the first question. I would like to share another slide here for the for the treatment, if that's okay, Doctor Islam. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. It's okay, Council. Yeah. Stop the share from your side. Yeah. Okay. Let me just uh, put another slide uh, about the treatment here. I'm a, I'm a visual person, so I would like uh, everybody to. Uh... Right. So... Share I can't see the share screen here for some reason. Islam, how can I share screen again? Here it disappeared from my uh, from my side. Uh, just uh, uh, minimize the screen because you may be uh, full screen now. So yeah. just escape yeah. and escape and you'll see it. Yeah. Um, this is a green um, button. 
Let's move the cursor down, you can see it. Share screen. For some reason, it's not sharing. I don't know. Right. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it's it's not sharing uh, this time. But uh, in in terms of of treatment, um, so the, the the biggest study uh, that was done on uh, on the treatment of normal tension glaucoma. Uh, was the collaborative normal tension uh, glaucoma study, uh, and it was a multi-center study that was uh, done in 24 centers worldwide. Uh, the results really were uh, astonishing of uh, these results uh, of these patients. So it was a, a RCT randomized uh, control uh, study, and uh, they they had two groups, uh, and they were randomized. Really, uh, half of these groups or one group were treated with IOP lowering agent and uh, the other half, they didn't treat them at all. Uh, and they checked the progression in five years. Uh, so 17%, uh, so let's, let's talk first about the treated group. 17% showed progression in five years. Uh, and in the untreated group, 50% showed progression in uh, five years. Uh, however, 50% of the untreated group remained stable. And that, that was actually uh, aston astonishing. So the study confirmed that lowering IOP slows uh, progression in normal tension glaucoma, but didn't answer the question who will uh, progress. Uh, it was uh, actually, funny enough, uh, planned to last longer, but it had to be stopped early because it was no longer fair to not treat people uh, who had normal tension glaucoma. Uh, so now back to your question, how do we treat it? We can treat it as any primary open angle glaucoma, uh, medically or with laser or, or with surgery. I would advise that we start with, uh, with uh, uh, medical treatment. Uh, However, uh, the collaborative normal tension glaucoma study showed us that to reduce progression, you have to reduce the IOP at least uh, 30% uh, from the baseline. So if you are going to treat, you have to be uh, aggressive and uh, treat at least 30 or lower the IOP at least 30%. Uh, and it's worth mentioning here that lowering IOP from a normal range is much harder than uh, treating high IOP. And that's because the episcleral venous pressure is about 8 to 12, which limits the potential lowering of uh, meds and SLT. I will personally start, as usual, with prostaglandin analogs. And I would avoid uh, beta blockers, because beta blockers can lower uh, uh, blood pressure, especially at night. Um, the second line of treatment for me will be uh, bremonidine. Uh, because uh, the, the, there is another big study, which was the low tension glaucoma study uh, in 2005. It was comparing bremonidine to beta blocker. And bremonidine, although it showed a similar drop in IOP compared to beta blocker, uh, however, it showed uh, uh, that the glaucoma progression was about 9% compared to the timolol, which was about 40%. I hope that answers your question. Okay, the tour, uh... <coughs> Muhammad Mahdi. Hello, Salam Alaikum. Muhammad, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan bi hadratak. Awalan, I would like to congratulate, congratulate both of you, Dr. Walid. Uh, for hosting this nice uh, presentation, Thank you which is a very important topic. Thank you. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Walid presented the uh, topic in a very nice way, but I think this uh, disputable issue should uh, we should resort to the uh, the personal experience uh, because actually uh, the normal pressure glaucoma uh, most of them we could consider it as a 
a pre-barometric glaucoma or even in a stage uh, while the, no, the, the existing imaging devices of the eye cannot detect uh, a lesion yet. So we could uh, uh, detect lesions inside the optic nerve head, uh, like uh, the pattern of optic cupping. Actually, normally, the pattern of the optic cup shouldn't be that much steeper and steeper. Usually, it is steep nasally and sloping temporally. If we find that the optic nerve head is uh, steeper Temporally, I think that actually we could uh, has a higher probability of being abnormal. And the presence of bearing of circumlinear blood vessels and this kind of things could put us toward the diagnosis of glaucoma. And we can classify this patient as glaucoma as early as possible. Instead of waiting to uh, find some sort of visual field loss, which should be very late in these cases. Is it true uh, for that? Th thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, however, uh, uh, for normal tension glaucoma, because the, as I said, the collaborative normal tension glaucoma study showed yeah. that the untreated uh, group, 50% of them remain stable. So it, it really is a, is, a, is a bit controversial. There are a lot of questions uh, about uh, the, the normal tension glaucoma and only minimal answers. But the, the answer we know is that lowering IOP is, is crucial in treating normal tension glaucoma. However, some of these patients will progress anyway. So my, my personal practice is wait and see. So when I, when I get a patient in my practice referred with normal tension glaucoma, uh, as we know, glaucoma is a very slowly progressing disease. So I take a fundus photo OCT and visual field as, as the baseline di diagnosis, and I repeat them in four to six months, unless the, gl the glaucoma is, is very advanced. So if it is, as you said, peri uh, pre-parametric uh, glaucoma, I personally, I wouldn't treat, because once you start the treatment for a patient, it is a lifelong decision. Uh, and if, you know, if the patient is not going to progress, then there is no need really to keep him on, on treatment, one or two lines of treatment with a side yeah. effect. For the rest of his life. This uh, my teacher in the lead. So, uh, yeah. May I talk? Yeah. Uh, 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 what you clarified, Dr. Walid, is nice, but uh, the problem is that. Uh, 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 leaving such a patient without treatment, the problem is that the pathophysiology of such a case is not clear yet. Is it vascular? And we are not playing with the vascular insufficiency to the optic nerve head now. The only interplayable factor is the decrease in the intraocular pressure. This is the only way that we can do it right now. I think that protecting at least 50% of this patient who, uh, uh, which can progress in the future with uh, some of the anti-glaucoma medication like the uh, prostaglandin mm -hmm. analog or something like this could save some of these people from being progressing. Yes. Otherwise, we should wait till we find a, a, a hard conclusive evidence that these are real glaucoma. So of course, I respect that these persons, uh, these people are labeled and uh, uh, lifelong decision and this kind of things. Uh, but uh, uh, this issue is difficult to judge it from the beginning. Uh, well, I, I agree with you to, to some extent that, that the only answer we have now in, in normal tension glaucoma is that lowering IOB at least 30% will uh, slow the progression. But my point was uh, that I, I'm a bit skeptical before I diagnose the patients with normal tension glaucoma. Usually, I don't diagnose them uh, from the first visit. That was that was my point. But once 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 you diagnose them, and you're confident with your diagnosis, then I would uh, definitely treat them if they are showing any signs of progression, at least on the OCT. Yeah, he sent the trolley. Also, this is a matter of, uh, as you said, this is a, uh, an exclusion at this, uh, point. You have to exclude the presence. And yeah. other things that it is a matter of follow up. 
in, yeah, in case so, it like this, I can repeat the glaucoma workup even in three months. Yeah, that's, that's right, Dr. Islam, because let's say, for example, that I see a patient with, uh, let's say, uh, optic neuropathy, uh, glaucomatous optic neuropathy, which shows changes on the OCT and the visual field, uh, a glaucomatous uh, visual field defect, but he's not progressing because basically yeah. this patient was on steroids 20 years ago, you know, so he's, not, he's, he's never going to progress. You know, because he stopped the, the, the steroids 20 years ago or burnt out uh, pigmentary glaucoma. Yeah, so all, okay. all defect, yeah, and then all defect that is not progressing. Yeah, yeah. So could, you, can see, you can see this also to throw it for those with the most neurological conditions. That sometimes mm -hmm. if, uh, in the, from the history, as you said, this is a crucial point. Sometimes those patients who did, uh, who have uh, brain tumors or whatever, compressive lesions, Sometimes they have this long lasting lesions that is not progressing and they have the perimetric uh, lesions and OCT defect. I have a case, something like OCT is 40 something, 40 plus nerve fiber layer and uh, very narrow neural, neural uh, rim and uh, uh, OCT is a uh, perimetry was, was not uh, a pure uh, neurological defects, not prospecting the, the middle, vertical middle line, but at the end, this is a stable and it is not progressing at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot for that. We have Dr. Ahmad Boma. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, doctor, what is your opinion about it? I think neuroimaging is indicated in normal tension because I have a case treated by uh, his. Uh, brother is a doctor ophthalmologist he treated for one year as anti-glucoma treatment then i discovered her as a pituitary uh, glioma mm -hmm. so what is about the pupillary reflex it's indicated when you do uh, to indicate uh, investigation by neuroimaging pupillary, pupillary light reflex so I uh, I agree with you that for neuroimaging. Yeah, so I, I agree with you that uh, that a lot of these patients. That's why I said there is a lot of normal tension glaucoma masquerade. And thanks for highlighting this case because I had a, a similar case, who who was under treatment for a couple of years. Uh, I mean the 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 gentleman was using. Uh, latanoprost for two years and uh, I saw him in my clinic uh, with visual field defect just like just like the the, the one you, you saw and I said I, I, I mean I, I followed him up for a few months and there was no progression and I, I felt he's, he's not glaucomatous and uh, I sent him for for the scan and he came back with microadenoma so uh, in the pituitary gland uh, so I referred him to neurosurgery and they decided at that point that he doesn't need uh, any surgery, which was good, but at least we stopped the, the treatment uh, for him. So yeah, a lot of neurological, uh, and that, that was the, that's the whole essence of, uh, of this talk, a lot of neurological uh, problems might mimic or uh, masquerade uh, the normal tension glaucoma. Thank you very much for highlighting this. Uh, we have uh, a lot of questions on the chat, and also you are not uh, opening your camera if you want to open it. Uh, yes. First question, how can uh, how can we read the progression of normal tension glaucoma in OCT of optic nerve head and uh, nerve fiber layer? Dr. Ahmad Ali. Okay, uh, so, uh, so uh, normal tension glaucoma is, you can say it is a primary open angle glaucoma, but without high IOP. So, However, findings or whatever findings you will find in primary open angle glaucoma, you will find in normal tension glaucoma. Uh, so that's in terms of uh, OCT. So you will find uh, a retinal nerve fiber uh, layer thinning. Uh, and uh, like I, I had a, a previous talk a couple of weeks ago about the, uh, like how to read an OCT scan for uh, glaucomatous patients. So it will be typical either superior or inferior RNFL thinning, uh, either localized or broad, and you will find it also on the ganglion cell uh, map. 
the visual field, as I said, it, it will respect the horizontal meridian. Uh, uh, however, the visual field is a bit different in uh, the uh, NTG because it is deeper and steeper and uh, closer to fixation compared to the primary open anchor glaucoma. But it will still be on the OCT and the visual field uh, glaucomatous changes as well as the ones you see in primary open anchor glaucoma. Another question from Dr. Ismail. Is there is a difference between neurological optic neuropathy and normal tension glaucoma? Neuro neuropathy can be defined by OCT, he's asking. And he's asking again, is systemic control of uh, hypertension or other condition can be sufficient? Right, okay. So as I said at the beginning, uh, so the second question about systemic control of blood pressure. So as I said in the beginning uh, that uh, one of the most potent theories in explaining normal tension glaucoma uh, is uh, the vascular one. Uh, so we said uh, that uh, these patients have usually nocturnal systemic hypertension or migraine or prefer vascular diseases like, like Raynaud's. Uh, and reduced, they found that uh, they've got a reduced peripapillary blood flow. Uh, so normal tension glaucoma is not a disease of eye uh, on its own. Uh, it is a systemic disease. Uh, so I would work closely with the internist or with the family doctor or with the GP. Personally, I wouldn't uh, change uh, the blood pressure tablets for the patient. However, uh, like I usually write, if the patient is, is on beta blocker and systemic uh, beta blockers, I mean, and he is using it for uh, high blood pressure and using it at night, I would write to uh, his internist to try to change it to something in the morning and something else like maybe calcium channel blocker or something like that. Uh, so yeah, controlling uh, the medication uh, actually slows, uh, the, there are studies uh, showing that it is, it slows uh, the progression of, uh, or the deterioration of the normal tension glaucoma. Uh, what was the first question? It was about how, uh, the neuropathy. Can yeah. Uh, difference between uh, neuropathy and optic uh, nerve uh, head lesions like, uh, and normal tension glaucoma. Oh, that's, optic neurosis and normal tension glaucoma. Uh, that's that's uh, like like the very broad uh, question. So I mean, there are a lot of optic neuropathies uh, that you can see, like ischemic optic neuropathy or compressive lesion on the on the optic nerve uh, that might mimic, uh, uh, like there will be a cupping or might mimic a glaucomatous uh, optic neuropathy. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very difficult just by looking at the, the, at, the, at the optic nerve to decide if this is glaucomatous or non-glaucomatous. You have to, to investigate the, the patient and probe the history very well and send him for a scan if needed. So uh, we have the last question in the chat and then we have two raising their hand. Uh, the last question is uh, from Dr. Muhammad Aslam, which is the most reliable surgical procedure if patient is not compliant with medication? Okay, so uh, uh, I mean treating normal tension glaucoma, as I said before, is like treating primary open angle glaucoma. So if you can uh, treat with medicine or, or laser, well and good. Uh, if not, uh, you can proceed with either non-penetrating. Uh, it depends on what you're trained on. So if you can do deep sclerectomy or risk colonostomy, uh, well and good. If not, you can you can do trap. So so it's exactly like primary open angle glaucoma. So uh, if you're trained to do uh, non-penetrating uh, uh, deep sclerectomy, and you're confident, you can proceed with it. If not, you can you can do trap. It's, it's, it's exactly like treating primary open angle glaucoma. However, to, uh, I mean, you need, as I said, over and over, you need to aim at reducing uh, the IOP at least 30% from the baseline. Okay, we have Dr. Magdi Afifi. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Walid. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Magdi, Assalamu alaikum. Is there is any relation between uh, 
not ancient glaucoma and the dynamics of CSF? That's uh, that's an excellent uh, question, Dr. Magdi. So uh, there are there are uh, studies showing that uh, lower uh, CSF pressure uh, retrolaminar, uh, these patients have higher risk of uh, excavation of the optic nerve head. Uh, and uh, uh, Nangli Wang in China uh, have a, a lot of uh, work uh, studying the correlation between uh, the CSF and so the short answer is yes, there is a correlation. Uh, and that was evident actually uh, in another study uh, when they did uh, MRI with the fat suppression uh, uh, on the optic nerve subarachnoid space. And they measured the subarachnoid space uh, at three and nine and 15 millimeter. And they found that the space was much lower in normal tension glaucoma patients compared to high tension glaucoma or the control group. So the short answer is yes, there is a correlation between low CSF and normal tension glaucoma. Okay, Dr. Ahmad Yahya again. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, dear sir. Uh, one question, as you said, uh, one of the differential diagnoses is uh, a fluctuation of the IOP. If in my region, uh, if there is no facility to do facing of the IOP, uh, what a drink test, if there is any role for the detection of the high IOP or not? Um, I mean, water drink test is, is a very old uh, test that, uh, that came back to life for some reason recently. And uh, the, I mean, there, there, there is uh, some of the uh, new generation are, are using it again. Uh, personally, I, do, I don't do it because I have, I have a facility to, uh, to, do, uh, uh, to measure it in different times. Uh, on the day the IOP in different times. But yes, uh, you, you can, there, there is a strong evidence uh, that supports the water drink test. Okay, uh, I think there is no more questions. If there is anyone. Thank you, Dr. Islam. Tadal Trahan. Fisho Arim will comment on YouTube. Type, show from others. Yeah, we have uh, Dr. Ashraf. Can uh, be the visual field loss proceed uh, OCT? And they complete sometimes. I see abnormal glaucoma OCT changes, but normal visual field. Malish, I'll ask you can visual field loss proceed OCT and can become uh, because of OCT or not? And uh, because he saw. Some cases with abnormal glaucoma OCT changes, and uh, still he has normal visual field. Okay, so the short answer is yes. Uh, however, it is rare. Uh, so usually uh, the OCT defect uh, precedes uh, visual field defect in glaucoma. So in cases of glaucoma, uh, usually the RNFL uh, defect is evident in OCT first then uh, visual field. So OC OCT defect uh, can precede visual field uh, by more than one year. Uh, however, there are some studies showing uh, cases of uh, or glaucoma patients that have visual field defect with a green uh, OCT. And the reason is uh, if you have a thick RNFL and uh, when 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 you have RNFL loss, you will you will go from white, which is above normal, to green. So uh, if if you are in the green, it, you won't show any defect or uh, any hot colors on the uh, deviation map on the OCT. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that you are not losing or the patient is not losing uh, RNFL uh, fibers or retinal nerve fiber uh, uh, layer. So they might be thinning in the RNFL, but not showing yet on the OCT scan. That's because the, the patient presented at the beginning with a thick RNFL uh, layer, but that's that's the exception. Usually the, the OCT will, uh, the defect will show first on the OCT before the visual field. So you should be highly skeptical if you have a visual field defect. It might be because of something else other than the glaucoma. Okay. 
So we have another question from the chat again. Uh, some uh, uh, question on the YouTube that it was uh, black screen. Yes, because we the presentation was finished and the screen was not shared and there was no videos uh, for the presenter or for me. So it will be a black just the name only uh, on the YouTube. But uh, in the chat, we have two questions more. Uh, from Hawaii made 20. Uh, thank you, Dr. Walid, for this interesting lecture. My advice is to go for MRI in patient before starting lifelong anti-glucoma medication. We do MRI to patient with chronic headache without neurological deficits. Do you agree on this or? Uh... No, I don't agree on this uh, at all. As I said, uh, there is strong evidence uh, that uh, and that's that's the essence of of uh, of this talk that uh, MRI and 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 CT scans are expensive uh, procedures uh, and they are not needed for uh, each patient diagnosed with typical normal tension glaucoma. Uh, the, there is strong evidence that uh, the neuroimaging has no diagnostic value in typical cases uh, of normal tension glaucoma and should be requested only in cases that are atypical uh, or like patients who are presenting with other neurological deficits. I agree with you. So MRI is for those cases that is not uh, in our scope and you can proceed for MRI if you cannot diagnose it uh, by your uh, glaucoma or whatever it means and follow up, of course. Yeah, let me let me repeat again, uh, like the warning signs, because as I said, that's the most important. Uh, like, this if you can share the screen, yeah, Dr. Uh, mm -hmm. you can start share, you can share now. Even from this uh, red, you have the join audio and then share the screen, just, yeah. Is it shared now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shared now. Um, you can make it a PowerPoint, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so as I said, uh, these uh, six warning signs uh, should prompt ordering uh, MRI uh, or CT. Uh, so, if the patient is less than fifty, uh, and uh, if there is rapid deterioration or central vision loss, if there is color vision defect if the new retina rim is pale, or if there is any neurological, uh, sorry, any uh, other cranial neuropathies, or uh, if the visual fields are showing uh, neurological fields that respects the vertical meridian. Any of these, you should be uh, highly skeptical and think about ordering uh, MRI scan. But otherwise, in a typical patient with a normal tension glaucoma that has a glaucomatous visual field and OCT defect. Uh, I don't think there is uh, any point in ordering uh, MRI in typical normal tension glaucoma patients. I hope that answers the question. Okay, we have the last question from Dr. Uh, Dr. Christina Yang. Uh, can I give patient treatment with 0.8? Uh, cupping and negative OCT and perimetry changes and first degree relative advanced normal tension glaucoma. Is that the same thing from uh, from Gray's Anatomy or someone else? <laughs> she's in the on the youth in the chat. She's just write her name here. Yeah, Christina Yang from uh, from Gray's Anatomy. So sorry, can you can you repeat the the, the question again? And I give patient uh, treatment with 0.8, cup disc ratio 0.8, negative OCT, negative barometric changes, and first degree relatives are having advanced normal tension glaucoma. Right, okay, that's, that's a very good question. I would advise you to measure the, uh, the size of the disc, because as, as, as I showed uh, before, uh, uh, am I still sharing or? Uh... I'm not sharing, right? Do you want to continue this? Is my screen shared? Yes. Right, so let me go back to this slide. Yeah. 
So, uh, so as you as, as you can see here, this is an average uh, optic nerve head. But if you look at this optic nerve head, uh, uh, if you look at the cup to disc ratio, it will be 0.8 to 0.9. This all all these the four of them are normal optic nerve head. So it might be a patient like this or like this. This one, I would say it's about 0.5 to 0.6. This one, 0.8 to 0.9. However, uh, the patient has large optic nerve head. So my advice to you is to measure the optic nerve head. Uh, and uh, average vertical disc diameter is about 1.7 to 1.8 millimeter mercury. Uh, so it might be just a large optic nerve head. And as I said, that's the most common uh, thing that masquerade the normal tension glaucoma. It's just people forget to measure the size of the disc. Uh, if the patient is not showing any uh, OCT defect or visual field defect uh, with cup to disc ratio of 0.8 or, uh, and uh, positive family history, personally, I wouldn't treat uh, and I would keep a close eye on the patient. What do you think, Dr. Islam? I think I agree with you. This is a matter of follow-up. You need to follow him up because it doesn't mean that he have first degree relatives that he will develop. And the other thing, Dr. Reed, if you remember that uh, the, our problem, as I saw, you are using the Heidelberg and I'm using it also now. The problem with Heidelberg, it is not making analysis of the uh, optic nerve head or cup disc ratio or even measuring the, the uh, optic nerve head. The problem with, this is a problem with Heidelberg. In Zeiss uh, OCT, it is measuring the uh, optic nerve head. You can know if it is large or uh, small and you can get the cup disc ratio in relation. And even this is a software that you can agree or you can uh, uh, disagree with it by your clinical sense, but at the end it gives you a clue about the optic for those who are not measuring uh, with the uh, 90 or uh, 78 lens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, yeah, I think we have to remind uh, all uh, our uh, colleagues about the uh, correct corrective factor for the uh, for the lenses. That's yeah. for 90. It is you have to. Uh, multiply by 1.3 for the most accurate. That's one to one is uh, uh, 78 or 68 lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, but measuring measuring the the disc size is is extremely important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know sometimes if if uh, they are not so you know sometimes you can just see like you said it's a large disc. If you compensate for this large disc, it will find it uh, a regular cup disc ratio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was in the, the analysis of the Zeiss OCT before we have this machine. Now we have the Heidelberg because we have uh, another machine for the glaucoma, the HRT, and now they are just uh, promoting both of them. Yeah, but, L large, large, large disc will will anyway have large cup as uh, as you, as you can see here. It's a very large cup. It's about 0.8, but still this area. The rim yeah. will, still, will still carry uh, about one one to one point two million uh, uh, nerve fiber layers. So, uh, so large disc will have large cup and can present with about zero point eight or zero point seven uh, cup, but but the rim still carries a normal RNFL. We have Dr. Amr Mahfouz. He raised his hand. Yes, Dr. Amr, Fadl. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Islam. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Walid. Uh, first, thank you very much for this valuable and targeted to the point lecture. Uh, regarding the last question, Dr. Walid uh, and Dr. Islam, uh, I think in the following up these patients with ganglion cell layer, not only the retinal nerve fiber layer, is uh, very important in, in these suspicious uh, cases. Uh, what, what do you think also? Can you repeat the question, Dr. Amr? No, no, I'm not asking a question. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm just uh, adding a comment regarding the last question asked by uh, Dr. Christina regarding the patient with large cup disc. And you said we are checking the, uh, the, disc, the disc size and if there is any uh, large disc or combo or whatever. 
my my comment is uh, in these patients, I feel that uh, following up by the ganglion cell layer complex or ganglion cell layer thickness is much more important than following up by the cup and the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. Do you agree with me for this, or what you have? What is your comment? Yeah, so ganglion cell layer will show you uh, RNFL thinning uh, earlier than uh, than the thinning that you will see uh, around uh, or in the peripapillary area. Uh, so uh, yeah, that, that it, it is a great tool now in OCT. But if you are going to send the patient for for a scan anyway, you will have both. So you'll have the peripapillary area, and uh, you can have uh, the ganglion cell layer as well. But thank you for highlighting this uh, ganglion cell layer. I I have it in all my patients now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Doctor Magdi Afifi, here is his hand. Dr. Walid, it is an imaginary question. Do you think uh, optic sheath fenestration can help this patient? Uh, I mean, there, there, there is no evidence that uh, that that this will uh, will improve. Uh, the, I, I personally, I, I, I'm not aware of any study that. Uh, uh, that, that that proved that uh, optic nerve fenestration can uh, can improve. It is a very invasive procedure, uh, and if you can achieve the same uh, the same target, lowering the IOP by with uh, one of two medication, that would be well and good. Personally, I'm not aware of any study uh, that showed that uh, that, that the fenestration uh, will work. I don't know if, if Dr. Islam, uh, are you aware of uh, of any publication? No. Yeah. So uh, I, I personally stick to the medical treatment, to be honest. Okay. So uh, our last question from Dr. Ahmad Yahya. Islam, uh, you have a question again on YouTube. Can you share, Dr. Ahmad, the next lecture, please? Yeah. Okay. There is another question in the YouTube chat. I will get it, yeah. Okay. Hello. Dear, dear Dr. Islam. Yeah, Dr. I, uh, as you mentioned, the corrective factor for the lens uh, and the a normal optic disc size, if there is a, a corrective factor also for the large size disc or small size disc or not? No, the corrective factor is for the lens itself. Not for the... Uh, not for the optic nerve head, no. It is for the lens uh, magnification. Yes, but uh, I uh, I understand from the lecture of the Dr. Uh, Tarak Sha'rawi, as I think he said that there is also a, a corrective factor for the large size disc or small size disc, or uh, I am wrong. No, it is it is to measure the disc to know if it is large or small. Okay, but, but this is a corrective factor for the lens itself, for the magnification of the lens. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, so, Dr. Ahmed, uh, you might have a small disc, or as Dr. Islam said, or a normal disc, or a, or a large or very large disc. How do you judge if if you are using a 90 and I'm using, a, let's say, 70 something lens? Uh, the corrective factor is for you to measure uh, the size of the disc is different between the the, the different lenses. If, if, if that makes sense, as Dr. Islam mentioned. Yeah. There's a question on the YouTube uh, from Dr. Ayman Nagar, MRI orbit or brain? Well, it depends. It depends uh, what you're suspecting. Yeah. So, uh, so it's, 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 it's worth uh, ordering both. Uh, so MRI can show you compressive lesion, arachnoidal cyst or pituitary microadenoma. So uh, I would uh, I would ask uh, or I would request MRI with fat, suppress uh, fat suppression uh, for both uh, orbit and brain. Okay. Another question from Ashraf. Ashraf, uh, can patient continue deteriorate despite IOB less than ten, and what to do? Um, yeah, that's 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 a good question. Uh, I mean, the short answer is yes. Never say never in uh, in medicine. So they the, the can deteriorate. Uh, what to do? 
it's, it's very difficult because uh, the epicurial venous pressure is between eight and 12. And it is, it is very difficult to get uh, the IOP lower than that. Uh, I use uh, the analogy uh, with my patients. Um, like it's, it's like trying to, to get someone fat to lose uh, weight. That's much easier than uh, getting someone who's already slim to, uh, to, you, to, to lose 20, 20 pounds or 20 kilograms. It's just the body uh, doesn't like to go to some places, so it's uh, it it is it is very difficult to lower the the pressure below uh, ten. And you don't want to uh, to operate on a patient and leave him on uh, IOP of four or five hypotonia because this has its own risks like hypotonia myopathy uh, or retinal detachment or choroidal effusion. So it is it is a very difficult scenario. Yeah. Okay, I think we have all the questions now. Uh, at the end, we thank you, Dr. Walid, for this nice lecture. And really, it was amazing. And uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, being with us today. And if there is any last comment you want to add, Dr. Walid, please. Uh, no, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for giving me the chance. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, normal tension glaucoma is a diagnosis by exclusion. So uh, before uh, you decide that uh, this is a normal tension glaucoma patient, you have to uh, exclude high, high tension glaucoma and uh, make sure that uh, uh, this patient doesn't have any of the uh, normal tension glaucoma masquerade, especially the large optic nerve head. Okay, thank you, Dr. Walid, again. And thanks everyone for being with us today uh, with uh, our channel, Online OFSA. Uh, as we uh, mentioned before, we have uh, all, lecture in the, all lectures on the YouTube. It is uh, live and it will be available all the times. Also on our Telegram channel, Online OFSA. Uh, you can find also the, the lectures, the presentations, and you can download it if you want. Uh, we have two lectures, uh, one today, and this is a retinoblastoma. Uh, it will be at 9.30, Gorge Jordan time. And tomorrow, the repair of uh, an eyelid deficit, uh, an eyelid defect, uh, principal and message, Dr. Hatim Mautasim. Uh, can you put the other uh, one, Dr. Ahmed, for the... So today... Retinoblastoma by uh, the, uh, Dr. Tariq Duis and Dr. Yaqub Yusuf, Dr. Mustafa Mehia. It will be uh, 9.30 Jordan time. It will be, uh, I think, the same uh, time like, like Cairo local time. So it will oh, be Saudi at, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Arabia? Uh, so it will be 9.30 Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yes, after one hour. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you all and uh, hope to continue with us tonight at uh, 9.30. And uh, thank you, Dr. Walid, again. And uh, we have a lot of thanks on you on the chats. You can see it from yeah, everyone. Thank, thank, thanks a lot, Dr. Islam and Dr. Amr, for arranging this and for having me. And thank you very much for uh, uh, all the delegates and uh, those who attended uh, the talk. I hope it wasn't uh, too heavy or boring for you. You're welcome, Dr. Walid. It was a very nice one. Thank thanks. you. Thank you, everyone. And see you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks a lot.